Hey everyone, I came across this clip of Charlie Kirk having a discussion, a debate with a bunch of Hamas sympathizers uh, at this college campus, it looks like. So uh, let's let's watch it together and we'll talk about it afterwards. A little bit of a longer clip, but uh, the conversation is very interesting. Let's take a look. So who ran Gaza up until 2005? I mean, it was Same thing. No, Israel did. Israel used to occupy the Gaza Strip. 10,000 Jews left Gaza. The IDF totally withdrew. Why did Israel do that? You tell me, you're the one at the table. To pursue peace. Because they, they were promised a peace deal if they got out of Gaza. And then? Then Hamas took over as mayor of Gaza, and it's now a hot tub for terrorists, where there are thousands of rockets so every single the, month. Where was the peace that happened after they withdrew? Exactly. Israel signed a peace accord, and the PA violated it. But, so, so this is the way peace. Occupying territory. They weren't occupying. They got out. But you just said Israel occupied that territory. Correct. Gaza until they got out, so that's not. No, no. But they got out on a condition of peace. So they said we will get our ten thousand Jews out of Gaza. So ten thousand Jews used to live in Gaza. Like recognize that they were occupying someone's territory, and that's on. Well, so, so who, who is Gaza's territory? Whose is that? Egypt. It's been it's been Egypt for two thousand years. Okay. So, how, so since you're, you understand this, maybe, um, how did Israel win back that territory? Right, so in the 1967 war, they pushed back Egypt all the way to their borders, and so they, they gave up the Sinai Desert in pursuit of peace with Egypt. That worked. So then they kept the occupation of Gaza, which there's factories and rolling hills and vineyards, a lot of wealth there. There's two million people that live in Gaza, more or less. 10,000 Jews lived on the eastern skirt of Gaza. So in pursuit of peace, in the 2005 peace talks, Israel said, you know what? We want peace in, as a condition. We'll get out if you guys have real peace with us. Stop launching rockets, stop building terror tunnels, stop killing our children, all these sorts of things. Are you pro Hezbollah or? Can I ask a question? Sure, happy to. What formal education do you have? Plenty. I mean, formal education. Like a if, if, you're going to argue, if you're going to argue from authority, that's a logical fallacy. Tell me why I'm wrong. Don't tell me how many degrees you have. Don't ask me to change the conversation. I'm, I'm actually, I, I, would, I would argue I'm more informed because I didn't go to college and I've traveled the world and I've met with world leaders and I've read many books. So tell me, how am I oppressive? Can you name one example of how I'm oppressive? I can name a lot of examples. Can you name one? Name one example of how I'm oppressive because you just said it. Well, no, they just don't have facts. Can you tell me one time that I've been wrong about anything I've said? Tell me a time that Israel has launched an offensive war. It's you, Lebanon. Where they didn't. They're, they're attacking Hezbollah. That was it's within their borders. It was to Lebanon. They don't just attack. Hezbollah, Hezbollah occupies southern Lebanon, which is Iranian-funded. Is it not? Really, I had no idea. Thank you for informing me. Anytime. Maybe so... if you didn't go to college, you would learn more. Oh, you're so right. You're so right. Here, here's the thing. But like, IDF is a terrorist organization. How is I, the IDF is a terrorist organization? Yeah. No, according to a lot of people. Wait, hold on a second. The ID. Not me, but like a lot of countries around. Why is it that they haven't built a new school or hospital in the last five years? Hundreds of millions of dollars pour into Gaza. It's because Hamas runs Gaza right now, and they're a terrorist organization. So Israel got out of Gaza in 2005 in the pursuit of peace. 10,000 Jews were actually forced out of their homes in the pursuit of peace. Gaza got more dangerous. It became a hot tub for terrorists. You know where Hamas's money is being spent? On terror tunnels and rockets being shot towards Tel Aviv. Where were those two rockets shot two weeks ago out of? They were shot out of Gaza. Yeah, two rockets. Oh, what's the big deal? Yeah, wh wh who cares when Jews have rockets shot at them, right? Because Israel is, is fighting a defensive right for its own national sovereignty. All Israel has done since 1967 is go backwards. All Israel has done. The UN sent an Asian diplomat, I forget his name exactly what it was, to go investigate crimes against humanity in Gaza. Israel did not allow him to enter Gaza because they said his visa wasn't valid. And that was published in an Israeli newspaper. Okay, so I'll have to look into that. If that's the case, then I'll, I'll say that you're correct. Um, but here's the question, though. So Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East right now. They're practicing democracy. Muslims, Jews, and Christians... Well, they, they, they can. Hold, hold on a second. Hold, hold, th th first of all, many Palestinians in Palestinian Authority that is in Zone B, not Zone A, can vote in elections. Secondly, secondly, here's the question. Do you want, so you want them to be able to vote both in PA elections and Israeli elections? Why hasn't the PA had an election in 12 years? Mahmoud Abbas is a dictator of the PA that uses the money and the aid that we give him to enrich himself. Mahmoud Abbas, hold on a second. Hold on. Oh, hold on, but I thought he was democratically elected. So why don't you guys have students against the Palestinian Authority, not students against Israel? 
the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority is like holding guns against Palestinian children. Oh, I, 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 well, the Palestinian Authority was democratically elected 12 years ago. Mahmoud Abbas has not had any checks and measures against him. In Nablus, he lives in a 25,000 square foot mansion. Here, here, here's the bottom line is that Arabs are better served under Israeli government than under the Palestinian Authority government. Arabs are. I'm sorry, what? Wait, wait, I'm sorry, what? What are you? A majority of Palestinians end up dead? How dare you say something like that? There, there's 15 and a half million people that live in the Palestinian Authority. Half of them end up dead. So you're, you're trying to tell me that seven and a half million Palestinians have been killed? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, it's actually 15 and a half million is if you count the PA in Israel together. You're right. It's more like it's more six million in Palestinian Authority, nine and a half million in Israel proper. So it's about 15 combined. So six million. So you're trying to tell me three million people have been killed? Three million people have been killed by the IDF. That's not even close to being true. Yeah. So let me let me ask. Let me ask. There's a difference between Zionism and anti-Semitism. Then build build out that build that out for me. So let me get this straight. You you don't hate Jews. You just hate the Jews' right to exist in their homeland. What? Wait, hold on a second. That's a. Yeah, exactly. Like, so that, that, that's one of the worst identity <laughs> politics <laughs> arguments. Just because black. I'm not something, it doesn't make me wrong. No, no, no you're not. You don't have it's an apartheid state of Israel. That's not. That's not in line with conservative politics. How? How so? Because there is no separation of church and state. The why? The why can? Let me ask you a question. Why can Christians freely practice their religion in Israel? But Jews can't freely practice their religion in the Palestinian Authority. How are Jews not practicing? What happens if an Israeli citizen goes into a Bethlehem? What, what happens if a Jew goes into Bethlehem? What happens if, hap if a Muslim goes into Jerusalem, they can go to a mosque. That's what happens. Do you know what happens at Al-Aqsa? Do you know what happens? Al-Aqsa Mosque? People are turned away because they can't pray in their own place. Well, hold on a second. They have full access to Al-Aqsa Mosque. I was there myself. I was around 500 Muslims on the al Haska Mosque. Hold on a second. Jews' heads are cut off in Hebron if they go to Hebron. Jews and Israelis are not allowed in Palestinian Authority. So I, I was in Hebron three weeks ago. You know what happened? If a Jew goes, if, if a Jew goes to Hebron, their head will get cut off. Okay, so Jews are not allowed in the Temple Mount? You do know that, right? No, I'm saying Palestinians, Muslims going into Al-Aqsa. Right, so... I, it's very hotly debated. No, actually, when I no, was is. there, I was praying at Al-Aqsa, and I saw is IDF soldiers coming in while I was praying. Did How they stop you? you? Did they stop you from praying? They they throw, like, tear grass. No, no they don't. Not the Al-Aqsa mark. Did they stop you from praying? I shouldn't be in fear while but I... But they don't do what you, you say they're doing. I'm just telling you it's not true. Did they? Finish. But I, I, I don't think you're representing reality. I was literally there. So let me ask a question. I, 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 I was there, you, you should not be able to prove your religion. You should be able, if a Muslim... Okay, that's a really interesting point. So Jews should be allowed on the Temple Mount. Because the Muslims don't allow them on the Temple Mount right now. So Jordanian control the Temple Mount. It was, it was since the Prophet Muhammad, it was, it was, it was there since the Prophet Muhammad. Oh, okay, so do you think, it, here's the thing, so you think, do you think Jews should be allowed on the Temple Mount? It's, it's a... So you don't think it's a Temple Mount, because if you do, that's the very interesting thing. If you just say it's a Temple Mount, I, I'm putting you in a admittedly in a very difficult position because Muslims do not recognize it as the Temple Mount. Right, they recognize it as their place of worship and it's been that way since the beginning. N no, it's been the Temple Mount since King David, thank you very much. So, I mean, you could say whatever you wanted to say. I, it's a huge point. It's actually like, it's one of the biggest inhibitions of peace. I think that Jews and Muslims and Christians should all be allowed to go to the Temple Mount. Right now, Muslims do not allow Jews to go into the Temple Mount. One rabbi is allowed to go in once a year. That's it. That's that. That's the treaty. Why is that? It's that how is that fair? Why are Jews not allowed to go? But it's. I, I mean, Muslims are allowed to go to their holy sites. You, you just said you were allowed to go. Okay, but so people doesn't mean that other people aren't allowed to go. I, I, and if, if that's the case, then I'll totally denounce it. But you you are a living example that you were allowed to go. <laughs> it's just hard to watch sometimes but the the best place for a muslim or an arab to live in the entire region as far as 
having the Western values and having the freedoms that we treasure is ironically, as it sounds, in the land of Israel. Of course, to any other countries in that region. Not only that, they're granted full access to all of their holy sites. You cannot say the same thing about Jews or Christians in the uh, Palestinian Authority, in the Palestinian regions that are governed by Hamas or the PA. That is just the way that it is. I'm sorry to say it. That is just the way that it is. So in the land of Israel, if you want freedom, you want to have access for all of the major religions that claim a, uh, a place in the land of Israel, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, you want them to have access to their holy sites, have it under Israeli jurisdiction. That's just the way it is.